Hello, and thanks for joining us. Today we're going to continue learning about the MTS Criterion Model 43 Tensile Tester by using it to perform low force testing. Using its low force components, you will be able to test forces lower than one newton on small or fragile samples such as gel wafers. Now, let's move on to the physical setup. Adding grips and load cells for low force testing is a bit different from the high force testing. The most important distinction is that the low force grips and load cells are loaded together rather than separately. For this example, I'm going to connect the 100 newton vice style grip to the 100 newton load cell. When adding low force grips to a load cell, it is important that you place them together on a tabletop to avoid accidentally damaging or mishandling the load cell. To start, we're going to attach this grip connector to the bottom of the load cell. And then we're going to use this screw and this 5 millimeter Allen wrench to secure it together. Make sure it's just nice and tight there. Once that is secure, I'm going to insert my grip. Note that with this particular grip, I'm going to orientate it such that the right side, which you can see right here, has a line indicator. So make sure that that indicator is facing you. And then insert your pin. And now you've attached your grip to your load cell. To finish up, attach this screw adapter to the top of the load cell. Now, now that it is on there, I'm going to make sure that everything is nice and tight here. This could use some tightening, so I'm going to use this wrench and just rotate it clockwise. Just so it's nice and tight. And there you go. Now, this procedure can be generalized for low force grips of any sort. The system is now complete and can now be placed into the tensile tester. As a warning, don't make the common mistake of holding this by any other part other than the load cell. Doing this creates torque on the load cell that could potentially lead to errors in your data or the destruction of the load cell. Make sure that the system is only held by the load cell to prevent that from occurring. Now that this setup is complete, let's switch over to the tensile tester. There are a few items that you need to modify in the tensile tester to accommodate for your low force setup. First, Ensure that there are no additional grips or load cells placed onto your system. If the tensile tester is all clear, then you'll want to start off with removing the receiver from the 50 kN load cell by rotating clockwise. This is the area to which your load cell will directly connect to, much like with high force testing. Just make sure to be careful though because there is a bit of a drop. Oh. Next, take your system and screw it directly into the receiver's area. Be sure that when you are rotating it, to do it carefully and to do it only from the load cell. Just got to make sure that you catch a couple threads and then it becomes much easier to move. Once you get close to the top, remember to keep the electrical connection to the side for easy access. And we're almost there, right there. Now I'm going to remove the electrical connection from the 50 kN load cell and place it into my load cell of choice. Alrighty, now I just want to make sure that the system is com comfortably tight. Not too much so, but not too loose. And now that this is all set up, I can move to the bottom mount to place its respective grip. Just like before, place it into the hole, insert the pin, and tighten the system.
Now, let me just make sure this is nice and tight on there by rotating it clockwise. And there we go, nice and tight. Now, let's move on to physically setting up our system for alignments. Conceptually, performing alignments is about the same as with high force testing. First, we're going to use the controller to bring the two grips close together. Remember that these arrows indicate coarse movement, while the wheel indicates fine movement. So, bring it nice and close, now I'm going to go lock the system. So, get a nice metal slab, and you'll want to align the lower portion with the higher portion by making these two surfaces flush with each other. Essentially, all that you're going to be doing is pushing it against the plate so that they can be level. Now, when your pieces look nice and straight, you want to focus on the upper grip to finish tightening the system. So, to tighten this junction, place one rod into the lower lock nut, and then you're going to place another rod into the upper lock nut. While keeping the lower uh, rod steady, tighten the upper lock nut by rotating it counterclockwise. Make sure that you make it nice and tight, as sloppy load frames lead to big errors in displacement. So let me go finish that up. Alrighty, now I'm going to just start double checking, making sure everything is nice and tight. Let's go and look at this bottom grip. Just give it a little extra tug. And now you're good to begin performing tests. Now, let me show you how to go back and remove the grips. Going backwards, we're going to first unlock the controller and separate the grips from each other. You just want to make sure that you have enough space so that your grips have no chance of getting damaged or hitting each other. Like with the high force component, remove the lower grip by rotating counterclockwise with the hook wrench. Once that's nice and loose, I'm going to remove the pin and the lower grip and place them both into a safe location. Moving on to the upper grip, the first thing to make sure of is that the power is off as we don't want to be handling any live wires. As was shown just earlier, place one rod into the lower lock nut and one into the upper lock nut. While holding the lower lock nut steady, rotate the upper lock nut clockwise to loosen the system. Alrighty, now remove the electrical connection from your load cell of choice and just put it back on to the 50 kilonewton load cell just to make it easier for yourself. Now that the entire system is clear, we can begin rotating the system clockwise, making sure that we rotate it by the load cell. Just make sure to be careful as this is a long screw, so make sure that you're not caught off guard when it comes off of the threads and drops. Alrighty, now that the tensile tester is all clear, I'm going to place the original receiver back into the 50 kilonewton load cell by rotating clockwise. I mean counterclockwise, sorry. Alrighty, make sure it's just nice and tight up there. And so, now that the tensile tester is all clear, let's move over to the table for full disassembly. To start disassembling this system, I'm going to start by removing the grip from the grip holder. There we are. So I'm going to just place this over here now. Next, using this five millimeter Allen wrench. I'm going to remove the nut that was previously inserted in there so that I can then take off this grip receiver from the load cell. And there we are. Now, finally, I'm just gonna take this large screw component and just unscrew it. And there we go. Now that all the grips and attachments are disassembled, they can all be put away and used for later. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to prepare, 
mount, and test your high force or low force samples. See you next time.